Good morning. Welcome to St. Monica on this 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Restrooms are available, but only one person at a time. Collection baskets are located in the north and south vestibules for your convenience. Please exit through, through the side doors, one pew at a time, at the direction of the hospitality ministers. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Father. This Sunday, we welcome Deacon Sam Basta. Uh, if you got my email of last Thursday, then I gave a little bit about his biography. Uh, Deacon Sam, a, a husband, a father, a grandfather, a deacon. I had thought he was ordained with uh, Deacon Frank back in 2012, but I've since been corrected, but actually ordained in, in 27, in 07. Sorry, Deacon, those, those five years just blur to me, uh, but, but not to those to whom you've shared your ministry. And we thank you for uh, joining us while Deacon Frank is on hiatus to breaking open the word and helping us dive a little bit deeper into God's mystery and love for us. So let us welcome Deacon Sam. Of course, it is God who first welcomes us to celebrate the full goodness of his love in these sacred mysteries. Let us prepare ourselves now as we first call to mind our faults and failings, those times and places where we are perhaps an obstacle to the work of Christ. Let us ask the Lord now for pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To Christ Jesus, you forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. 
have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out, Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. <clears throat> o God, you are my God whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts like the earth, parched, lifeless, and without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory, for your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus I will bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you. Brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
May Almighty God be in your heart and on your lips. You may proclaim his holy gospel, worthy and well. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes and be killed on the third day, be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing should ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me, must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord placed his word in Jeremiah's mouth in order to root up, to tear down, to demolish, to build up, and to plant. We hear Jeremiah today, many years into his ministry. You duped me, Lord, and I let myself be duped. Some scholars translate duped as enticed or persuaded or even seduced. It is as if Jeremiah was saying, this isn't what I had in mind when you first called, Lord. Proclaiming God's message has brought Jeremiah derision ridicule, and reproach, not from God, rather from those who had turned from God in their pursuit of empty idols, dredging their own leaky cisterns rather than turning to God, the source of living waters. God's word was something Jeremiah could not turn from, God's word, a burning fire in Jeremiah's heart, which he could not hold in. We're told from St. Paul today, do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed and renew your mind. In other words, think differently. Our church, this church, instituted by Christ, the keys of the kingdom given to Peter, the rock. And in today's gospel, Peter is given a gift of humility as he is redirected in his thinking. It was, is, never Peter's job to rebuke our Lord. 
And in a similar way, great care should be taken in how we, that is, you and I, think and speak about our church, taking caution of what you say about the Pope or Archbishop and what we think they should be saying or doing. I'm reminded of the late Archbishop Burnett who said to those in formation, the sacrament of holy orders is about the God's holy order in our church, a holy order that begins with Christ, and Christ has entrusted to Peter, and so on. The church, the baptized, we who are called to put on the mind of Christ, we are called to live as people who knows God is with us. Through Jesus, God is in us. Through this Eucharist we share, we live and are given life by God. This is a gift entrusted to each of us. We are called to trust in God, to look beyond the limited mortal reality that is this world around us. We're called to live a life beyond ourselves. We do this by acknowledging and providing for those who have not. We must deny ourselves using the gifts we're given. We're called to dispense those gifts to those who have not. And when we have not ourselves, we're called to trust in God. God who knows our needs and loves us. I wanted a child, Lord, but I didn't expect her special needs. So this isn't what you had in mind, but it may be God's will. Your child is a gift to you and to the world. If division and hatred is projected towards us by the world, we must Bear in mind that we're called to love and compassion. Love your neighbor even when they hate us. Sometimes one just saying, I'm a Catholic, brings wrath and ridicule. And that can be especially difficult to endure and it comes from a fellow Catholic. This isn't what I had in mind, one might say. Leadership is discipleship. And to be a disciple of Christ, we must deny ourselves and take up our cross. Called to be a people of faith. Called to proclaim that God is working in our church instituted by Christ, his Son. We must trust our Pope, our bishops, our priests. We must trust each other, the baptized, the forgiven, those who have received the bread of life, the confirmation, or experienced the blessing of matrimony, the healed, and the ordained. We who have been made whole through the sacraments of the church were called to do the will of God. And we must trust in that reality, a reality that has been entrusted to us. Trust in the sacraments at work within us, outward, efficacious signs they are like a burning fire within our hearts. 
but on the mind of Christ. Learn to discern the will of God. In God, we trust. The Nicene Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord is our help and our shield. Filled with confidence, we turn now to God with our needs. For the church, may the fire of the Holy Spirit embolden us to give witness to God and to serve others by following Jesus as priests, deacons, single or married people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for leaders of nations and states, that they may work to ensure ensure fair labor laws, safe working conditions, and just pay for workers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who are suffering in the wake of fires and natural disasters, and for all who work to help them, may their connection in the face of hardship be a sign of abiding presence of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our parish community, may we always encourage one another in the trials of daily life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who are sick and weighed down by physical disabilities, that God may sustain them and their caregivers and so help, help them to bear their cross with dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, especially Peggy Reddy, may they now see God face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and love, hear the prayers we bring to you this day as we trust that you'll provide for our needs through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right and just, her duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we stand and dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
and give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. If you got my pastoral letter of last uh, Thursday on the Feast of St. Monica, then, then you know we have 214, wait a minute, got an update, now we have 218, 218 uh, children enrolled for this coming academic year in our school, and that's with all families knowing of our necessity to having to start remotely, but at a moment's notice, I kid you not, literally overnight, go to full in-person learning while still offering our remote learning for those particular families who may need that through the whole of the year. So very exciting. So this coming week, uh, the children will be getting equipped and ready and prepared for uh, the school year. So I'm very excited for that, 218, and perhaps even more, if we can accommodate more for the school year. Also, uh, beginning this coming Friday in September, uh, Friday Mass, we won't be having a public Mass on Fridays, but instead we're having a private Mass for uh, the classes in the school. And uh, by that I mean, so like if it's eighth grade, if the Mass on Friday will be for the eighth grade of family, families of eighth grade students, and then seventh grade and their families as well. And my idea, my hope, my goal here is that uh, on these Friday Masses with the parish school families to, to really just to help them grow deep in the relationship uh, with Jesus Christ. And for many of them, this will be their first experience, first-hand experience of Catholicism. We have uh, quite a few families who join us, not, not Catholic, but hearing of the great things happening in our school who are going to be part of our school in this year. So very exciting school year for us ahead, and, and we are ready for all of it. So I just invite you to keep uh, the school families uh, in your prayers as we get up and running this week. The Lord be with you with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.